Hello, I'm George Landis, and this is the Landis Performance Channel. Today, I want to talk about ignition testers, primarily MSD. There are two different versions. These work great for testing ignition systems, should be in every racer's toolbox. I also use them for testing EFI issues. Let me show you the products. Okay, so we have the old unit, which is the MSD 8998. Now it will do RPMs, you have power wire, a ground wire, a points output wire, you have a crank sink and a cam sink. Now this one, digitally, you can change to any kind of RPM, you can check chips, you can check the output of the coil. This unit isn't backlit, and it's the older unit, it works really good though. The newer unit, is an 89981 and this is the same has the same con connections a power a ground a points out a crank and a cam but this one you can program to multiple different crank signals so if you're working on a vehicle whether a race car or an EFI car you can disconnect your crank trigger connect this up and simulate the triggering device of the of the engine and see how it's working. So today we have a ignition box from a friend's race car and we're gonna we wired it up on the bench and we're gonna go ahead and give it a test and show you how the system works. I forgot one thing I want to show you before is that you can use the MSD harnesses and make connections for whatever you need. This one is at the box and it's got a weather pack connector on the end. Another harness that has a different style weather pack connector. This harness is the way they come with an MSD tech connector on either side. And here's another one that I've made with another different uh, end on it for checking out fuel injection. And you can use all kinds of different connectors here to connect to whatever you need to connect to. Okay, so now with the unit powered up, we can scroll through the different things. So you just hold the button down and then you have your settings. Crank type, dwell, mode, diagnostic, you can even check your battery voltage to make sure that you're connected to a good charged battery. Go to crank type, you can select 8 cylinder, 6 cylinder, 4 cylinder, 12 cylinder. Then you've got different crank triggers 60 tooth, 58, 24, 1x, 12 minus 1, 35x. We're going to leave it like this and we'll go ahead and fire this uh, ignition up. Okay, so this is my little test bench, my fab table. We have a MSD7AL-3 coil and the tester spark plug. There's this, the MSD3. And you can see I've got the white wire hooked to the points input. So we're not using a crank trigger signal, we're using points out. And there's the coil and there's the tester. So let me go ahead and fire this up and you can see the tester in action. So there is the tester and that is output at 1800 RPMs. Let me go ahead and run it up against the chip. Turn the launch control off. So there, we ran the ignition box, we've tested the coil in the box up to 7,800 RPMs, and we have a 7,800 chip in there, and currently we're at 7,804 RPMs, and you can see that the rev limiter is cutting cylinders. We'll back it down 10 RPM.
and it, you can see that it was full on spark. So now we'll go ahead and test the launch chip. Okay, so we have a 3000 RPM chip and the launch chip. The first switch is our ignition on, the second switch is going to simulate a trans brake. You can see the tester is showing 34 RPMs and that's what our spark is doing. So now we're going to go ahead and now we've simulated trans brake. We're going to run the RPMs up. And now we're at 3,034 RPMs, and you can see that it's at full cut. We'll switch the unit to fine. We'll back it down. 29.94, and it's at full. 3,004 RPM, and it's at full cut. So we know that that chip is now working correctly, the MSD box is working correctly, and the coil is working correctly. Now we can check the burnout circuit. Okay, so now we've moved the wire from our launch circuit to burnout circuit, and we're gonna test that circuit. We're still using the points input wire, and we have a 5300 chip in the burnout. So now we'll turn the ignition on, give it some RPM. Now we'll turn the burnout switch on, and now we'll raise it up to 5300, and it should cut. So there's 5300 and we have limit. At 5310, it's full cut. So that shows that that chip is actually off a couple degrees, excuse me, a couple RPMs. So at 5300 even, it should be at full cut and it's not, it's at partial. But at 5310, it's at full cut. Not a big deal. But that's the good thing about this unit, is you can test your chips to see if they are actually good or not. I have seen them where they've been bad. Another thing you can test is if you're getting RFI or EMI from the coil. You can see this is trying to, trying to go. So with this box close to the coil, everything seems to be working right. Now if you had a system that let's say your chip isn't working you could move the coil farther away from the box and then see if it starts working correctly that would show that the box is getting RFI interference or EMI interference this one is working fine we have them in close proximity and actually on a race car this is in a dragster so the box is in front of the driver and the coil is mounted on the engine behind the driver so we know that that won't be an issue with this unit so now we'll go ahead and hook up the crank trigger and remove the points output and run the test again. Okay, so now we're ready to switch. We need to turn our RPMs back to a nominal number. We'll go back to uh, 100 RPMs. We have our points wire disconnected and now we'll connect our crank trigger simulator. Okay, so now the crank trigger is connected. So we're simulating a crank trigger. We're going to turn the ignition back on. We're at 100 RPMs. We have our auxiliary cut off, so we're on the high-end chip. Now we can run it back up again. Alright, so we ran it up to 7900. I backed it down to 7800. You could hear it starting to clip. Then I pushed the find button, and now we're on smaller amounts, so I put it at 7810. We're at full cut. 7800, we're at partial cut. 7790, we're at full on. So we know that chip is spot on. Now we can go ahead and check our burnout chip again. And there at 5300, we have partial cut. We go to 58310, full cut. So we know that's working perfect. Now we can put the, move our trigger wire to our launch 
and do the same test over again. So you can see how this tests all the circuits to make sure that the box is good and then the coil's good and that both portions of the box are good. Not only the magnetic trigger in, but also the points in. So either way, those connections, this box is good and, and working. Now what I will do in the future is I'm gonna make some videos on Holly and Excel DFI tuning and to help so we're not in a car and all that, I'm gonna hook up two systems on the bench using this unit and I'll be able to simulate the engine running. I'll have all the sensors plugged in and this unit will then run the RPMs. The EFI box will recognize the signal and it will simulate the engine running. So it'll allow me to do some tuning without having an engine running and, and being in the car and trying to get the camera in there. So I hope this uh, can help somebody out. You want to have an ignition system that you're not sure if it's working or if you just want something that you can test different things, race cars or street cars. If you're doing EFI installations, you just want to make sure that the, the unit is seeing the proper trigger, you can use this box. It's an excellent box. That's why I have two. Um, I think that's all we have for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe, like, and that's it. See ya!